About two months ago, I filmed a video where I adopted two female baby rats. You might see them in the back of today's video. I have them just roaming on my bed. In that first video, I hadn't even solidified what I was going to name the rats, so I've come quite a long way. In today's video, I want to give you updates on the rats and how I've been caring for them. Again, it is my first time having rats, so I really appreciated all the constructive criticism that I was getting in my last video. It was super helpful, so if you guys could also comment down below in this video to let me know any adjustments I should be making to their diet or how I've been caring for them, I'd really appreciate that. I just put this pillow behind me because they like to hide behind a pillow sometimes, so I want to make sure they're comfortable. I really wanted to name one of the rats Sprout. I was super inspired by Emiology and her rat names. I thought that was so cute. Obviously, I like plants and nature and gardening, so I thought that was really cute. Because I decided on that name, a lot of my friends thought I should name the other one Bean, so it could be a duo of Bean and Sprout. I tried calling my little girl Bean for a while there, but it just didn't really, I don't know, it didn't like fit, if you know what I mean. Um, so I was still trying to figure out names, and I ended up going with Dumpling. So this little girl here, this is Dumpling, and the solid gold color one is named Sprout. So it's been so cool seeing them grow up and their personalities develop. Sprout is definitely more outgoing and kind of more trusting is always the first one to come to me and come to the front of the cage whereas Dumpling is kind of more timid and stays back a little bit but as I've like had them of course I haven't had any rats before and I haven't had any like super small pets at all like mice or hamsters or anything like that I've only really had cats and dogs rats make such good pets and I am having such a good time with them even my little sister who's 10 has been introduced to them and she loves them let me show you what I've been feeding the rats. I bought a cage, which you would have seen in the last video, from Pet Value, and it came with like a set, it came with a tester of food and bedding. I quickly realized that I didn't like that food, I'll put it up on the screen. I quickly switched over to this Oxbow pellet mix. I wasn't totally confident in making my own mix at home and making sure that I'd be able to provide them all the nutrients, so I bought these pellets. They definitely like these pellets more than the other ones. They kind of stopped eating the other pellets. That's why I quickly changed over to these ones, and they did quickly start eating these ones, but they much prefer when I feed them real grains and, you know, dog pellets and seeds and fruits and stuff versus these pellets, so I've been incorporating a lot of that. I make up a little mix of basically carbs with a bunch of cereals. I choose cereals that are all under 5 grams of sugar. I use a mix of Cheerios, Rice Krispies. I use some rolled oats and sometimes hard dry pasta. I also like to mix in some protein. I decide to get dog food. This is just from the brand Crave. If you can see, the pellets are quite small. I obviously didn't want to get super big dog food that came in like large, large pellets because they have a hard time eating it. So this was the perfect size. And I really wanted to invest in a high quality dog food. This has the fish as the first ingredient. And I looked at the ingredients list and it was all like good stuff. White fish, lentils, split peas, just super like real ingredients basically. I also like to mix in some seeds, but not too, too many seeds, but every so often I like to put these in the foraging boxes. Okay, so in terms of how I feed them, I don't put all of their food into a food dish or anything like that. I basically take it and then scatter it free around their bedding so that they can forage around for it. I also have some foraging boxes and foraging toys. This is the acrylic wheel that I use in the cage. It has holes so that they can just move it around and get it. I don't put it super low to the ground because then it kind of seems like it would be easier because they can just stand and do that. I have it in the middle of the cage um, and I have a little rope underneath so they have to stand on the rope. I also just save these old toilet paper rolls to put stuff in and fill these. And these are just some foraging boxes. They can grab the stuff from inside and of course they chew on the cardboard. But sometimes I'll also stick seeds and little Rice Krispies and things in here so that they have to forage in here to get them. And I also stick little snacks into these as well. This is just a pine cone I found on one of my walks. I boiled it in some water to disinfect it and they like to just rummage around in here as well. Just different ways to kind of stimulate their mind so it's not as boring in their cage. Speaking of their cage, I'm just looking at it right now by the way, I'm planning on upgrading to a Critter Nation condo cage basically so that they have more space as they're growing up. I thought this cage was a good size for them as they're young. You know, if I want other small rats 
I can sort them out in this cage and then eventually move them over to the critter nation cage. That is my plan right now. Let me show you the bedding and the litter I'm using. This is the bedding. It just says paper bedding with odor control. Please let me know what bedding you would recommend and what bedding you use. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of this one, so please give me recommendations. It can be hard looking online for like food recommendations and stuff like that for the rats because I'm in Canada and it's sometimes you know it's people in the UK talking about their opinion and whatever so it's not as accessible to me and I was looking at stuff and sometimes shipping is just absurd to Canada like it's like it's like a hundred bucks and I'm like okay we're not doing that and then for their litter box I use a cat litter made out of paper which has been working out so well I obviously want to train them to do number two do their business and the litter tray and I wasn't really sure because people said you know you can keep putting their little poops into the tray but some rats just won't pick it up and it just won't work out for some people and those have to keep going keep on trying but my rats picked it up so quick I was like so impressed basically I took their poops that were around their bedding and I put it into the litter tray you know every day I would do that and then I change out the litter pan and everything like that and then over time I just realized there's no poops anywhere around the bedding and it was all in the litter tray and I was like so impressed I was like these cuties are so good so if you get rats I highly recommend starting to litter train them I did it right when I got them when they were young their favorite place to hang out is in this globe. Of course, if you're a rat owner, you've seen these before. And I would highly recommend getting one of these. I got one of those coconut little holders. I'll insert a picture. And they don't use it. Because honestly, I've purchased some things, and it's either a hit or miss with them. Like, sometimes they will just not even use it. I bought them different hides, and they just don't even touch it. But this little globe, they use it all the time. I hang it up this way, but you can also have it the other way and have it standing. The thing with this, they will pee in it. And even Emiology was saying she has to clean hers out and rinse it out every couple days because they'll just be peeing it. And the thought of them just like laying in their pee did not sit right with me. So I was like, oh my gosh. So I put a little towel, a little cloth in here. I purchased designated towels just for this purpose because then it does start to smell. So every day I change it out. And then because I don't do laundry every day, I just wash this by hand in the washroom and then replace it. So of course, I don't want to keep them in their cage forever, <laughs> for the entire day. So every night, I like to take them out of their cage. They like to sleep for most of the day, and then they get more active during the nighttime. So I think that's the perfect time to take them out. Basically, at the end of the day, once I'm done my schoolwork and all that stuff, around like 6 o'clock, around dinner time, I take them out, and I let them free roam around my bed, just like this. I'll bring them toys and stuff like that to kind of stimulate their brain. And this is the time I like to kind of bond with them. And sometimes I try to train them. Honestly, the training has been going very slowly and it has not been going the best. Like I can make a noise and they come to me, but I tried doing other stuff and it has been kind of slow and steady. So please leave your recommendations down below. I think I just have to do more research on the best way to be training them and what to do because it's honestly a struggle. I'm talking about you. It's very difficult. But I think they have a lot of fun, they run around, and they'll like come on me because when I first got them, they weren't as comfortable with me and all that stuff, of course. So I have to do a lot of bonding with them. But now, like, they come on to me and like hang out with me while I'm journaling or on my laptop, just like this. And even when I'm laying down in bed, they always like hang out by my legs, in between my legs, and it's really, really cute. Yesterday, for the first time, I got them to do some pee fishing. I didn't fully record it because I wasn't sure how it was going to go. I hadn't even fed them peas before, so I was like, why would they want to dunk into this water to get something that they don't even eat, that they don't even know if they'll like? So I started feeding them some peas, and then slow and steady, they actually started dunking in and getting the peas. I just filled a small Tupperware with water and put some peas in, and they would just stick their hands in, grab some peas and nibble on them and then run into my bedding um, where they'd finish eating them. I think I want to do that more often. Perhaps I could do a whole video of them pea fishing or digging around in some dirt while I chit chat. Let me know if you'd be interested in that. And please let me know down below what other rat videos you'd be interested in seeing. I know a lot of you are super knowledgeable about rat care. I know a lot of you have had like a ton of rats in the past, which of course I haven't. So I really appreciate all the knowledge you can share with me and you know, any constructive criticism. I'd really recommend you watch the video where I actually adopted the rats. There was so much excitement. It was the first video of me preparing the rat cage and I was like, oh my gosh, what is happening? And it was so exciting to first get them from the breeder. 
they're super tiny and I was just really trying to let them have the best transition into my cage and into my care as possible. Let me know what other rat content you'd like to see. If that's, you know, my rat cage setup or as a first time rat owner, what are some things that you should expect when you first bring home rats. Just leave any recommendations down below and I'd be so happy to do that for you guys. Thank you so much for watching today's video of me and my rats. I really appreciate all the support and all the love you've given me. I'll see you guys in my next video.